Okay, y'all, I got some of these white oak boards up here on this fence row. It's been sitting here for a few years. So they are well seasoned, but they was kind of wet. And I wanted to use them for something, so I went ahead and cut them into lengths like this where I could stick them inside in my drying box. And I've had them in there drying out the last couple days. So now I'm gonna cut them up and we're going to put them in our mold for our serving board and see what we can do with them. Okay, we're back getting ready to pour. I got my mold sprayed down with my urethane mold release. That seems to be working real well for this mold. I got my Teflon pieces cleaned up and sprayed down. That way they'll break loose. I got everything weighted down and we're ready to pour. Um, using my Magic Resin Deep Pour 2 inch. And I got some of this Deep Blue Mica I like. I'm going to try that. And I'm just going to make with this mix here. You got, I'm going to do 16 ounces of the uh, hardener. And then we'll do 32 ounces of the uh, the resin. And that'll leave us with 48 ounces. We'll get it poured up and stirred in, and then if I have any room left over after that settles in, I'll come. I'll come back and add some more. But we'll go ahead and just pour this and see what it looks like.
All right, we got her all poured in there. I'm gonna let it sit for a while before I even worry about the bubbles. I have found you got at least six hours where you can come in and twirl it all up and change the all the little coloring and the mica in there, you know, to get it and show the little swirls. And you can add a little extra color. I mean, you can come back with a stick in six to eight hours and add if you want to, especially when you're only one inch thick. Now, if you get closer to two inches, it may uh, cure a little bit faster, but not much. So I'm going to leave this set right here just like this, and we'll come back this evening and add a little bit to it and go from there. Okay, it's been probably seven hours or so since I've poured this. You can see, you know, it's starting to thicken up a little bit. So I'm going to pour some more. I'm going to mix up. Uh, I got my little cups here with some pearl blue mica. And we're going to mix up a little bit more and then pour it in there and try and give it some decoration. Let's see if I can't get this on the camera. Let's see if I can pour and hold at the same time here.
All right. That ought to be blended pretty good. Now we have two different densities because one of them is starting to cure. So it should be heavier and sit closer to the bottom naturally. And then this other lighter blue on top, but we'll see how it all works out. But I think it's gonna be awesome. All right, so I'll let that sit here for a few days and I'll take my weights off of it and probably this weekend we'll go ahead and pull it out. See you then. All right. We poured this on a Sunday and this is the following Saturday and everything looks like it's ready to get demolded. Uh, I wouldn't do any work into it yet. I'd let it cure a few more days, but we can get it out of my box and free it up to make another one. you can see on the bottom of this of course i'm on this old table here and it bends in in the middle so that's the same thing my uh my epoxy did because with the weight in there this thing is flexible so it'll push down so but that'll all straighten out whenever i stick it on the uh my router jig so we can't get these off now. I'm still getting air pockets underneath my pieces. I think I'm going to mix up a little bit of clear just to fill those in a little bit. Especially this one here because it's down below the wood. Uh, I'm going to have to do something different with these. Keep from getting them air pockets. Uh, I'm going to fill that in and then we'll let it set up a few days before we can actually stick it and then uh, level it out.
Okay. Now, you really at this stage in the game, it really needs to set up for a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll knock some bubbles out. Since this is the second coat, it shouldn't be dropping anything down into the wood or the wood sucking in and bleeding that air. So we should get all the bubbles out. Be able to do that right now. And you get all the bubbles out right now. You can tell if you got a good coat or not. Good, even, thicker coat. But you're going to notice over time as this thing dries, these edges, it'll have a little bit of run on the edges, possibly. So, the only thing I found to, to do with that is just take your hand and wipe that bottom and get that off of there. Now, you can go straight down the side. You don't want to wipe it off, but you can, that'll just smear out any type of runs you may have. And this is a, just you got to feel for it and go type of uh, method. I mean, it's not an exact science. And all your different <clears throat> epoxies will dry. While they, they're similar, they're not all the same. So the drying time may be different because your thickness of your board may be different. You may have poured on more one pour than you have the next pour. So I can't give you an exact time frame, but I like to come back in at least 30 minutes and check it. I'll come back 30 minutes and an hour later about and do this on the bottom. And if I think I need to, I will also do it on the side. Now this bottom corner, you ain't gonna see that that much. But these sides, you will. So you just got to be cautious about what you do to the sides after it starts curing. All right. Whenever it cures, we'll come back and let you take a look at it. I think that oak's going to work great in there with this second coat. All right. Got this one. Got the finished top coat. Man, I like that. That looks good. And say I got this. When I put that tape on the bottom, you can peel it off fairly easy. my fingernail underneath there. Now, it will leave a small line right there on the edge, but you can barely see it. Uh, some areas you can see it better than others. But that's just, uh, that's where the, the top and the bottom meet. Now uh, here, you have a little tape on there. You want to get the rest of the glue off. I just use a little denatured alcohol and a rag. And you can clean it that way. Tape's gone. Tape markings gone. Fingerprint still there. 
and they're going to be till I get done with it. But there you go. Now we flip it over, and I have my tape on both ends here, and it's marked for center. We'll double check our center for our grill, because I have been known. And here you got five and three quarters. That looks about right. See, that one's wrong. So I went 11 sixteenths. This one's got to go. I uh, say I was 11 sixteenths. And I had my mark on 13 sixteenths. There we go. We got five and 11 sixteenths. Five and eleven sixteenths. Always a good thing to double check that before you drill, because once you drill that hole, it's there. And if you drill them off, you will be able to see it. Uh, we line up our. It's got a center line right there on our Craig jig. You know, just don't stick your finger underneath where that hole is going to come through, or you're going to probably have a hospital bill. And I shouldn't have moved it like that. We will line it back up. So right there. And that's in line. in line. Flip it around. And do the same thing on this end. That's in line. That's in line. Peel off your tape. Okay. I'm having fingernail issues today. Get it underneath there. There we go. Wipe it off real good. Find my little bit of alcohol left right there. Still didn't. Turn it around, and you get this one here. You stick it in a hole and turn it to the right. Stick it in, turn it to the right. Once you get 
started. Flip it over. And then I get these rubber uh, cushions. And these are made, you can find these in the cabinet department. And these are made for drawers or cabinet doors that just give it a little cushion so it don't have a hard bump anytime you close it. And these give you, uh, give you like a short little stand For your board to sit on keeps the screws off the cabinet keeps it from sliding around the cabinet keeps from scratching up the bottom and there you go you flip it over now you see what you can do with a, just a little bit of a old oak barn wood if you notice how some of the coloring is darker here and it's lighter up here, that's why I added that lighter color, but I didn't get it all the way up underneath my block. But I still like the way it turned out that way. If I wouldn't have added that, then you'd see it turn out just this darker color like I got in some of these areas. So whenever you're doing that color, you just got to remember to do that kind of stuff to give it the extra looks. You know, the acrylic means... Makes a lot of difference to this wood. But if you like the video, just click on the thumbs up. If you didn't, I appreciate you watching, but you can click on the thumbs down. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, ask a question, go right ahead. I'll answer anything I can. And if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, just subscribe to my channel. And I'm going to try and show just about everything I make. I will see you on the next one.